to pinpoint when you hurt your back? Was it uh, one player or just cumulative? No, nah, it was yeah, probably cumulative. Um, just in terms of you know the whole game, it's all the stuff that sort of went on as a physical game. So you know, sort of after the game is you know, when I started feeling some stuff and whatnot. And um, but the last couple of days have been good, just getting some rest and obviously treatment and stuff. So feel good now. Ronnie had a tough drop, and you you talked to him after the game. What did what did you say to try to lift up a teammate in that spot? Yeah, I mean, I'm like, you know, it's. I told him, I'm like, it's this is a team sport, dude. So like, for you to uh, hang your hat on, it was all my fault, kind of thing. Like, I just sat down next to him. I'm like, bro, it's it takes everybody for four quarters. Everybody has their moments and plays, and and uh, that's why it's a team sport, man. You got ten other guys on the field with you, um, and. More than anything, man. I just, you know, he's a brother of all of all of, all of ours, and um, we got his back, man. We go through some stuff like this, and it's a long season, man. So you're gonna need everybody. It takes everybody. So, um, you know, keep your head up, um, learn from it. I'm not saying that that's okay. Like we have standard here to be great and excellent, and that goes for myself. And um, so learn from it. We got your back, and and keep your head up, man. It's, it's a long season. So um, he's a good kid, man. We love love going to war with him, and he's gonna be just fine. Usually when a quarterback is uh, having rough times, a lot of times it's because teams are bringing so much pressure at him. He doesn't have time to throw. The Rams game, it seemed like there was a handful of times where they only sent three, and you had a lot of time. What What is that like? I mean, it's, I know it's fairly unusual, right, to have that much time to throw and to be able to pick one guy out. What's, what are the challenges of that? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, throughout the week when we're game planning and stuff, it's, you know, we're going through our progressions per coverage. This is our answer, and this is how we we have to get to it. Um, and then there's times where we're like, and in this situation, they might drop eight and only blitz three. Um, and then in one case, they only blitz two. Um, and so those are the kinds of cases that we're talking. We're like, if that kind of stuff happens, then go through your progression, but be ready to, you know, go off schedule. You know, so my antenna is up once I feel that kind of stuff happening and um, knowing that I'm probably gonna have to move around here and, and find some open space, either use my legs or hit someone off schedule. So it's something that we talk about. Um, and, you know, we've seen it from time to time here and there. So I just, you know, gotta be ready in those moments to use my legs. I think you've seen three or fewer uh, rushers, more than almost twice as many dropbacks as the next quarterback. Like, any reason you think why, why they might be doing it to you guys more than other teams? Uh, I'm sorry, blitzing or? <laughs> In terms of teams rushing just three or, okay. or fewer guys, I think you've had almost double the dropbacks of the next closest guy. And any reason that you think that teams might be doing that to you guys? I'm not really sure. Um, I mean, I, I guess we have, I guess you could say, you know, because of the amount of playmakers that we have, you know, when you're rushing four to five to six and you're blitzing. And, and if we complete a pass, man, it's one or two broken tackles away from, you know, a really big gain. And so when you have playmakers like we do, I mean that's the that's the chance that you take as a defensive coordinator of calling those kinds of you know blitzes and stuff. So, but at the same time you have to be on top of it. But um, I mean that could be a reason. Um, outside of that, maybe it's you know just trying to make me play quarterback and go through reads and progressions because when you're only rushing three, man, then you can drop a lot of guys in different directions and and coverages. So um, I'm not really sure why, but um, it's something that's popped up for sure time and time again the last couple of games. Rams busted a coverage. Uh, Brandon Ayuk was open deep. You look at him, he didn't throw it. When you watch the film, like how do you, what do you, like what do you assess? What do you see on that play? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I'm, I'm going through my read. Obviously, there was a route that I thought he was going to run, um, but he felt grass, man, and, and went and took it. And you know, when we're watching it after, it's like, yes, that's that's the right thing to do in that moment. Uh, for me, I'm going through my read and progression, and I'm concerned about a safety, and and then I see him go deep. And I feel like he's open, and I'm like, like something's not right, you know, in my mind per what we have drawn up. Um, and so, but that's something that you know we both have to be on the same page moving forward with. If he has stuff like that that happens, and it's not being dumb and just running deep every time, but like actually, you know, there's a reason for why you're going deep. There's some communication stuff that we've talked about um, where we can take that opportunity. He did the right thing. I have to pull the trigger in that moment and, and be ready for it. So. Um, you know, something that we we had to learn. And, and in the heat of the moment, that time of the game, situational football, I'm trying to protect the ball, be smart with it, but also be aggressive. And then that happens. And it's like, man, you know, I don't know exactly where the safety's at. So all of those put together, you know, that, that that's what happened in the moment. Communication, being on the same page, is that something that's lost a little bit when the off season isn't there? Uh, no, no, that's not what I mean. I mean, you know, if, if that was Juwan Jennings and that would have happened, I don't know if I'm throwing that ball either. I'm just saying, like, in the heat of the moment, when you have a route on, 
you end up taking some grass and going deep um, for the right reasons. You know, how are we on the same page so that I can let that go? That was a new situation for myself and all the receivers and everybody in the room. So, Speaking of Juwan, what, what's it like? What goes through your mind when you see him, you know, with a 50-50 ball, you put it up and you see him go over a, a DB and, and make that kind of catch? Yeah, I mean, he's – He's a playmaker, man. He's obviously got, you know, the big frame and, and really good hands. So for me, like in that kind of situation, the the last thing that I think is I, I just need to give him a shot and give him a chance and then he can he can bring it down. And he's shown that time and time again the last couple of seasons. So, um, you know, for me in that moment, it was obviously the trust factor of trying to get it over the defender and, and giving my receiver a chance, but also knowing that Juwan is a baller and, and he's going to, you know, do what it takes. And so... Um, you know, hopefully down the road we can get some more shots and opportunities with him down the field. And, and it's nice as a quarterback knowing that, you know, with his size and his mentality that he's going to do what it takes. And he's shown that time and time again. So uh, there are three throws to Brandon. There was a, a slant that was a little behind him in the first quarter. And then there are two short sideline throws where, I don't know what happened, it just looked off, you know, there were incompletions. Is that, uh, I'm sure you love these questions, uh, but you know, is that, you know, because you didn't have training camp or is it just kind of like, well, no, it's just kind of fluked and, and happened to be thrown to him each time? Um, I would say more like the fluke side of things. Um, I think that slant, I, w I should have been more aggressive and just let him. I think it was just a bad ball. Um, it was behind him. Um, and then the one, there was another short game one. Um, I didn't see the safety rotation and I'm trying to force it outside and, and I should have progressed to juice. So in those two scenarios that I can think of, that's on me. You know, that has nothing to do with Brandon so, or our timing or anything like that. So um, obviously, we're still continuing to, to build that kind of thing. And I am with all my receivers. It's not just him. And so, um, you know, but um, those couple of examples right there, those are areas for me to grow and be better. Um, and so it just happened to be Brandon in the situation. Conversation with Ronnie, is that something that you do frequently with, with guys, especially on offense, that you think maybe need a little extra talking up, et cetera? Did you do one on ones with them? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I, I just think when the when it's the right time and the right moment with whoever, especially, you know, young players, man, just because I know how it felt and how they feel. Um, because, you know, we're, I still go through stuff right now, like when um, I don't play my best or I could have done better or I missed a couple plays and you're just, you know, you just want it back, um, and it's it's nice having a guy come up to you and a teammate that that goes to war with you, being able to say, "Hey, man, like it's okay. Like let's learn from it." But I got your back, bro. Like it takes so much uh, to win in this league, and to and it takes everybody. Um, and so, um, you know, when I was a rookie, it was really nice, you know, having Fred or Bosa or Dre Greenlaw, like these guys that come up to me and just tell me that you know they got my back, and I'm like, dang, like it just gives you a perception of or perspective of I don't have to go out there and do it all on my own. You know, I got other guys around me and I got a team around me uh, to help be successful. So it's just sort of reinforcing that time and time again when I see it with, with some guys. Yeah, this week with the Patriots defense, I mean, pretty sound defense, but what does it look like on film? What do you, know, what do you notice? Um, I mean, exactly that. They're, they're sound in what they do. Um, you know, I think they've been running this type of defense for a long time obviously going back to like Belichick and everything. And so these guys like know the scheme really well. And, um, you know, they're just their leverages and, and forcing the ball to go in certain spots. Um, you know, I don't I don't think, you know, it's, it's easy as a quarterback when you drop back and they can do a lot of different things too. And, um, but they make you um, be smart as a quarterback, go through your progressions and, and be accurate. It's that kind of game. And so the guys up front are gonna bring it. And then the guys in the secondary are all tied together. and. And um, they play tight, really good coverage, if you ask me, and it's it's sound. So that's the challenge this week. But more than anything, we just got to focus on what our scheme is and what we're trying to do and uh, take what the defense gives us. So Today's practice, Brock, and you're seeing teammates carted off. What emotions course through you and the team? That reality check? Yeah, I mean, it's a, uh, you know, it sucks. Anytime you see a teammate go down or anything like that, I'm, I'm just trying to practice, get ready for this game and everything and then you look over and you see like a cart on the field so it's like all right like dang it who is that what happened and then we, we got to keep going and finish practice um and so but it sucks man because these are the brothers that you come to work with every single day you're going to war with on every sunday and and just um going through all of this together and so when you see a guy go down man obviously it sucks and you want nothing but the best for that person so 
Um, but we got to have a, the perspective of, you know, you got to be grateful for when you're healthy and take advantage of your opportunity. And um, But more than anything, man, the culture that we have here, whoever goes down, we, we always got their back and we'll, we'll be there for them and continue to build them up and try to get them back as fast as possible. So, Sorry. You lost three in a row last year. Right, at, we had a bye week, right at the ship, got it turned around. It's way earlier this time, but how would you describe the feeling when you're, you guys aren't performing to your own standards? Not necessarily what people on the outside think, but what you guys think. Yeah, I mean, um, honestly, there's been games like that even when we we win. You know, there's games where we haven't played our best and we come in here just like with the chip on our shoulder again. Like, yeah, we might have won that game, but we know we need to play at this level. And so, obviously, it gets more. Um, brought to light when you lose because then you're real with yourself and you're like, man, like that's the reason why we lost or whatever and we need to be better. Um, but more than anything, man, um, I think it just gives us, you know, a, a reality check of every game matters, every play matters, every drive matters, and you can't take it for granted because, um, you know, especially at the end, you know, trying to get in the playoffs and everything, um, you wish you could have had those couple plays back to win that game, to then have that game towards the end. All of it matters and it ties together. So, um, but more than anything, we have a standard here and that's what we're focused on every single day. And, um, you know, we hold each other each other to that standard and, and we're hard on ourselves. But um, that's, that's, I think, why this is a successful organization. So, Last one. Uh, so you never played with McCaffrey and Debo and Kittle you know, at, at once. Uh, I'm sure you're not like freaking out, like, oh my gosh, you know, what am I going to do? But I mean, was there an element of just like curiosity of like how this might, how might this offense look different? Or um, I don't know, just, do you have any thoughts like that going in, into that game without that much talent? Um, I mean, yeah, sometimes there's some plays where, you know, um, we're trying to draw stuff up for Christian out of the backfield or George to get a certain matchup. Same with Debo. Um, and so when you have those guys out, um, you know, I think we go back to who we are as an offense, what are our base plays and and what we're really good at. And let's run those plays. And we have good guys to step up in those moments and, and execute well. Um, use Jordan Mason, use Juwan, obviously BA. Um, so we have guys that are that are dogs and are willing to step up in those those um, spots and perform really well. So um, it was a question for me, you know, like, all right, what's our game plan going to look like? Because every week it's a little different. Try to get Debo the ball a little bit more here because of this matchup. Try to get Christian the ball here. So last week, not having three of those guys that you listed, um, you know, it sort of just kept things a little bit more simple uh, game plan wise. But um, we're still going to get the ball to our playmakers, JJ, BA, Jordan Mason, you know, and, and go about it that way. So um, that's how I that's how I looked at it and thought about it. Thanks, guys.